could you like first uh, tell a bit about your band? I know uh, you started as a duo, but like, what's the story behind Dead Register? Oh dear. You start. Uh, um, all right. Somebody needs to to govern how long this goes um, for me. Um, we started as a duo. Um, I wrote a bunch of a, a small handful of songs with a drum machine, and it sounded entirely too much like Godflesh. Too. <laughs> it, it was. Uh, like it was pretty much God flesh worship with some weird clean vocals over it. And we uh, promptly, as soon as we got through playing a short set to ourselves with a drum machine, uh, we're like, ah, yeah, ah. <laughs> we're, we're two generally boring individuals and to show up on a stage where April would be affixed to her keyboard and I would be, um, at the time, probably just staring at my fretboard trying to sing. Uh, <laughs> that wouldn't make for a very good live show. So um, the the just be having the animation of of acoustic drums with a a body flailing with sticks. Um, yeah. Also, just having a third brain in the mix, you know, like it just opens up, you know, sonics and creativity, and you know. It expands this little like conversation that goes on and on and on. Yeah, the circular <laughs> monologue. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we um uh, we we got a drummer, we got moving, um, and we tried to hit the our scene as hard as we possibly could, trying to deliver something that uh, that this town was lacking. Um, to fill a void for dark, heavy music at the time, there was. I'm also filling your own personal. Yeah, my own personal. Yeah, it's like oh wow, void like, of like yeah. all right, let's like, make music we want to listen to. Yeah, um, uh, that's the most important thing, of course. Um, <laughs> I want to make music that I want to hear. Um, so, uh, and it just so happened that yeah, it it, it was something that Atlanta was didn't know that it needed and we delivered it so at, at this point we're uh uh we uh, our first driver chad um had to had to dip out for a bit and randy came and filled in for all of our tours <laughs> uh, and then and then um yeah i've played every i've played every show that isn't local <laughs> pretty much except for a few where Danny played with you guys, but yeah, yeah, and Danny, yeah. Danny joined, and he went on a a, a run with a couple week run with us, um, and then, and then, and then Randy came in and and uh, has been crushing with us, um, not only crushing the drums, but uh, recording and uh, being a <laughs> being the star of our new video. Um, <laughs> uh, randy has i think 37 parts in our new video at least i'm like that Eddie Murphy the in coming to america of the new video yeah oh, randy, how was it to join the band well uh so as soon as i heard them um I was immediately in love with the band. So I always wanted to play with them. They were my favorite band in Atlanta before I joined. Um, so touring with them is awesome because, well, first of all, we get along really well. We have a lot of similar tastes and we're all like super opinionated about different things. So we get to like kick a lot of ideas around in the van. Um, but, you know, I, I've been a touring musician in many bands for most of my adult life now. So I'm I'm pretty comfortable just sleeping in the van, having a good time. I mean, that's what that's what it's all about, you know, to go out and have a good time, but no expectations, no, um, you know, just play my best every night and have a good night. And uh, so the tours were great, and uh, getting to play in the studio was great too. And getting to bring you know my recording background into the band has been really cool as well. So uh, yeah, but early on I had a. Uh, 
recorded a live set of the band with uh, the first drummer Chad, and so I, I I've always kind of had in my mind like what I would do if given the chance to play in the band. And so when I was given the chance, I I just kind of did it. <laughs> just kind of went for it. <laughs> big big beats. Um, Randy Randy brings uh, a muscular approach to these new set of songs. Yeah, and, I'm from a John Bonham, like Dale Crover kind of background with the drums. So I'm a little less finesse than Chad, the first drummer, who's a great drummer. And I try to do all his parts, a lot of service, but I, I hit hard <laughs> and I'm on the downbeat <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so you said you wanted to bring something new, new that uh, Atlanta hadn't seen before. So. Um... Like, what are the building blocks of your music? Then, how would you describe your music? Because I would be a bit hesitant dropping it to any box, really. Well, yes, yeah. <laughs> so, the, so I'm going to pitch that question right back to you. How would you describe it? Because we have a very hard time describing our music to people. <laughs> no, I'm terrible in that. I would just say rock music, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the best we can do too. <laughs> Yeah, a large part of the discussions we have on tour is how do how do we describe ourselves? We we actually probably spend an hour at a time every, after every show driving like what? So what are we again? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is a little different every day. So yeah, I definitely see us as rock. I like to tell people that everybody in the band plays bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, up until. Recently, uh, Randy had this stainless steel 28 inch bass drum that would, uh, with one hit, um, it would knock drywall off the walls. Yeah, you could um, see people in the audience would flinch whenever I hit it. It was really great. <laughs> but we got tired of carrying it, so we had to we had to retire it. But yeah, I guess we're we we can easily say we're the heaviest rock band that we know of yeah um at least in the southeast um like we're, we're not quite metal enough to be metal but a lot of metal people like us people call us goth but goth people don't call us goth yeah like um, <laughs> regular folks are like you guys are a goth band goth folks are like you guys are absolutely not a goth band <laughs> but you're not terrible so we'll tolerate you um <laughs> Uh, I say it's it's kind of like listening to a glacier. It's like glacial yeah. music. It's 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 not unfamiliar because it has the melodies and the hooks and the familiar beats, but it's just kind of like if if everything was slowed down a little bit and made louder and deeper. But like so it's it's familiar territory, but it's also uh, I think presenting it in a way where the 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 listener is kind of more like you're sort of forced to endure like the sheer weight of it, and I think that's w what has kind of become the purpose of our live shows for sure. Is to just you know the minute we hit that first note, we want everyone in the audience to kind of be like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> you know, we want them to. It's got to be a visceral experience. Absolutely. And and we we absolutely love our our recordings and they're great, but we are undoubtedly um, what they would call a live band. <laughs> uh, that's where that's where we do our most damage and and make our our uh, unfortunately without touring, but um, that's where we make them our most fans is presenting ourselves to a new fresh uh, body of people who who like our music and we we do. A great job of conveying it live in a what's the right word I'm looking for? Um, it's an experience. Yeah, a visceral, devastating experience that we try to that we uh, try to let flow naturally from us, and it and it it really jives. And it, it's a lot of folks say it's hypnotic live. Like yeah, uh, we can't play it quietly it just it doesn't translate well so a big part of what we do is 
built on volume and you'll hear other bands have talked about this in the past um i know that swans was a big proponent of playing loud because the volume does something as was uh my bloody valentine they actually made their whole like artistic statement about when you re attain a certain volume a certain like you're moving a certain amount of air it starts to do things to people uh like emotionally and, and spiritually even in a way uh and i know that even when i'm playing the drums and i have the amps at my back like something is different than you know any other band i've been in where i'm just playing drums and you know there's a guitar and a bass and a singer it's there's something about the amount of uh information that we're pushing <laughs> from our instruments that uh makes the experience a lot different even as a performer so that's tr what we're trying to convey to the uh, the audience as well and also for them to like go on that trip with us you know like we definitely Absolutely. want we want them to be as as fucking weird as we are <laughs> <laughs> yeah to be a part of the experience with us yeah uh, um and not only i mean just side note, uh, which parallels, April has made all of our, she manages, uh, not only plays sub bass and textures and backing vocals live, she does our live visuals too, which um, she's, she and partially me have filmed and she's compiled and edited and made a number of really awesome, uh, awesome visuals that, that flow with our live set, which we are, desperately missing um also uh, a big shout out to uh emily harris who's i guess one of the the big atlanta photographers who um has collaborated uh, we've we've had her actually perform in a number a handful of our music videos yeah she's been in several music videos she's helped film a couple of uh video projects she's actually done some live dancing for us um at, at least one of the shows like two or three two, of the shows. Three, yeah, she's yeah. done a lot of no more of like okay, we're playing a show and she just busts out crazy on stage or in the crowd, just like and people are like <laughs> people are frightened, like what is this weirdo <laughs> person dancing to this stuff for? <laughs> but it's 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 it makes it a more complete experience, you know. Like Yeah, she's even asked, she's like, Can you take me on the road with you and I'll dance at all your shows? I'm like, uh <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so we can't wait to bring that back into the fold. And oh yeah, she she um, she has some parts in in our our live visuals too. Even when she's not physically present uh, dancing, uh, she's be, be yeah, projected you, behind us. Yeah, you'll see her face and her body in our projections. So but, she's like the fourth member of the band. Yeah, <laughs> the, un, the unseen member. It just started snowing, y'all. What? Yeah, it's snow, snowing right now. It just started. Weird. Yeah. Well, uh, the most other songs then, of course, don't fail me on the record recording now. They are also, as I understand, recorded live. And, uh, well, uh, you have a lot of live performances also on your YouTube channel. So how is it for uh, like a live band uh, putting out music uh, at the time like this it's just good to be able to do it <laughs> we just can't do it i just walked away <laughs> we, well we because we were supposed to have an, a brand new uh full-length record released last year and we had these giant tours planned and everything so we're still sitting on this full length that's already complete waiting just waiting to see what we can do with it. And, because... and we're about to go start demoing another full length worth of music. So we, <laughs> we are we are backed up. We are constipated with awesome music right now and we can't do much about it. Um, yeah. But the cool thing about the the so the other songs on the EP for Don't Fail Me were um, recorded on our last tour in sort of an almost empty room in the middle of louisiana somewhere where they'd fed us a spaghetti dinner and then we went and played <laughs> and uh we I, we went back we got the Cajun spaghetti. The, what's that Cajun on the spaghetti. night of the year in shreveport we we played for a a 
three heaping plates of homemade Cajun spaghetti. Yeah, it was, and it was worth it. It was worth yeah. every minute. Um, <laughs> but we also got, we got these tracks back from the soundboard and it was, uh, you know, they were individual tracks, which we barely ever get. So we were able to take it to our own studio and kind of mix it and play around with it and, and it started sounding kind of good. So we said, Hey, why not, you know, put a, we, we went and we did a sync to the um, video that was shot that night. And we ended up with three songs uh, that were one, one is actually the one. What are the songs? I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> one from the first album, one from the second uh. album. Yeah, one from the first album, one from the second album, uh, one unreleased song, one which unreleased. will be on the third album. Which yeah, is, on the next album. Yeah, um, and yeah, they turned out great. I mean, there, there's some... It, it's, def, it's definitely live, um, but raw. Um, and you did a great job of, an excellent job of, of mixing that to, to convey the voice that we have live, even if, it, even if I missed a few notes here and there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's live. We all, we, all, we all miss a few notes here and there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I find myself kind of, I get lost in a performance, really lost in a performance sometimes just essentially fuging out head banging until my neck feels like it's going to fall off. And, um, uh, pushing as much air out of my my windpipe as I can to the point where I f- I'm seeing stars and I'm not actually even there. Uh, so yeah, occasionally I'll, I'll I'll slip and not sing the right note. <laughs> That's okay. But I I love it and I miss it and I want to sing all the wrong notes to everyone as often as possible as soon as possible. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what could you tell me about the upcoming album then? And more like, uh, how do you see it as part of the like uh, evolution of your sound? Well, I can start by saying that. So the the we've definitely moved more away from like the metal stuff that was kind of going on in the, in the beginning, um, and also a little bit. We're actually kind of writing some songs that are a little bit more dancey, like. They're in a, a more mid mid to up tempo. Uh, we've incorporated like elements of surf even, and like uh, I, it's weird. We, we're kind of we're toying with a lot of different things now, um, and we've definitely broken away from the longer songs and and kind of more into like you know three and a half to five minute songs instead of like. I mean, the first album had like 14 minute songs on it and stuff. So we're, we're kind of doing, um, we're just playing, playing with the formula. We, you know, uh, we, I think we're also like when we're in practice together, we tend to try and push an arrangement like a song, just push it as far as we can take it. And sometimes we'll break the song and have to back up a little bit. But, uh, you know, since I've joined the band, definitely more attention paid to arranging so that's something i really love to do so we put we put a lot into like i try to think of uh drum parts that are like familiar but not trite you know that sort of thing and then we try to um play more with dynamics now you know instead of being loud all the time like we're just loud 98 percent of the time now so <laughs> so we've been playing playing with a lot of that from my yeah. point of view since I've joined the band uh, like I had to learn the catalog first so it's going from the learned catalog to the catalog that I participated in creating that's that's been my experience is like seeing just new elements and, and some familiar elements from other styles of music that we kind of just wanted to explore and play with you know um, you know I'm not a I'm not like the really chops driven I'm not a metal drummer you know I don't I don't have the chops I'm more of just like an old school, uh, you know, I, I play like hip hop beats really loud and and do big, ugly, you know, traditional rock and roll drum fills. So um, with that skill set, I'm trying to push it as far as I can go as, as well. So I don't well, know, what do you guys think? I mean, not to, uh, I'm just uh, kind of skirting away from the question, but, you know, those hip hop drum beats, I mean, 
just about the entire Godflesh catalog is built around hip hop drum beats. So um, I'm yeah. loving it. Yeah, yeah so, it. so that's a, a, com- a band we have in common for sure. You know, I, I grew up, I used to put on uh, Godflesh to go to sleep to at night when I was 16 and 17, <laughs> which is <laughs> insane music to sleep to. <laughs> Yeah, we, we kind of nice. Yeah, oftentimes when we want to take a nap, like, all right, what will what can we put on that'll that'll knock us right out? And it's Napalm Death. Napalm Death. Napalm Death is is the is, best nap music, hands just down. Just like, oh man, what do I need to to do to go to sleep? Like, oh, I'm kind of riled up, and Napalm Death just comes in. I'm like, man, that's like a lullaby. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> My um, napalm death acapella broke the internet. Sorry. Uh, well, let's 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 reel it back just a just a bit. Um, the the single that we're putting out now is going to be is just a standalone single that we felt didn't. It 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 was an excellent song, but it didn't flow with the rest of the songs that we wanted on the album. So we we decided to go ahead and work and make this music video, which. Once you see, you will be tickled. Um, uh, just make it a standalone single, make it a little EP with the, the live songs, a maxi single. Um, it, it's uh, it, it's definitely the same air as the rest of the, the forthcoming album songs, but it it was just different enough that we felt it would be a great standalone release, especially now, um, especially it just felt weird like <sighs> yeah it's like we it's not a good time we feel personally to put out a full length so we're like all right what's we need to put out something because you know like like randy was saying we're just constipated <laughs> you know <laughs> like we gotta do we gotta do a little something so like here's here's a, here's this like little nugget <laughs> here's a little song that captures just about every element that we like about our band um there's quiet moments there's loud moments there's hooks there's dissonance um it takes you on a little journey yeah it's it's a it's like looking back at yourself in your own little box it's like well i i mean i guess we've changed but i'm staring at the mirror every day and i can't really see as much as like randy would or somebody who's you know not just staring at themselves yeah but definitely, uh, I mean, as far as the evolution goes, the, the formula is there, the riffs are there. It's a, just a bit more concise and focused. The sad stuff's more sad. The heavy stuff's more heavy. Um, we've, we've broken some barriers with BPMs, um, at least in contrast to what we've done in the past. Um, yeah, we're definitely trying to be more concise with our writing and um, kind of, you know, not limit ourselves so much to like a certain formula so to speak just um hence uh april's approach to this new music video um i mean the content is dark but the music video presents as uh, a a light juxtaposition to that <laughs> <laughs> you know just allowing ourselves to break form a little bit um kind of see where that takes us yeah, it's like, what's the least metal thing you could do? A puppet show. <laughs> <laughs> a puppet show and cowboy hats. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Cowboy hats have been around metal for a long time. Well, not, Especially the Texas boys. I don't know. I don't know about the, you know, the, yeah, I guess like the, yeah, the ministry side of metal. But, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think the Pantera guy guys were were cowboy hatters too but then again so was brett michaels of poison 